Welcome to the first of many series in betting theory. This is Exacta Betting Theory. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I am joined by Tim. Riders up, Tim. Welcome in, Tim. We're going to talk Exacta strategy, Exacta theory. And now Tim's here to kind of play host slash. Uh, I don't know, amateur, even though he's a very professional player here. <laughs> going to play amateur and uh, ask me some questions because we had this question come in from an avid listener, Carlos. He said he'd like to see Ombre do a uh, video on straight cold exacta, how you cap them, how you approach them, this and that. Uh, so, yeah, got us kind of got our gears grinding here. And uh, we talked about doing this a series. I'm going to do the exacta as he asked, but we're also going to do trifectas, pick threes and fours and fives and, you know, verticals, all this good stuff. So, Tim, first in, welcome. Welcome aboard, man. Uh, hopefully we can appease Carlos. And I know we've had this question a million times, so. We, we have, and we have good questions, and I think this is going to be a great series for us. And I love starting off with the exactas because it's, it's my favorite wager and the one that I prefer to play personally. So I, I love that this is the first one in the series. Yeah, same here, man. And the, the reason why I was kind of, I guess the reason why I've been tasked with it is because I usually, when I put any bets public, uh, including I do a ton of uh, mutual funds and public bets, it's almost primarily exact as because that's what I'm most comfortable with. Right. And if you put a gun to my head and said, we need to make money on just horse racing, I'm going to bet exact as 90% of the time. I will bet some win places. I will bet some win bets. I will bet some trifectas, but 99% of the time, if I want to make money, it's in exactas. And uh, that's the hill I'll die on. So let's go ahead and get started here, Tim. Could not so agree more. It's a great bet. All right. So let's take a look at this first scenario. Basically, uh, in, in a horse race where you have decided that you've got a single horse that's better than everybody else in the field, but the rest of the field is kind of wide open, how would you approach that? Yeah, I basically broke this down, Tim. I broke it down into eight scenarios, so we'll cover these quickly. Uh, yeah, and if you have a, a a top horse opinion where you are pretty dead set on this horse is going to win, but you're not sure what's what's happening underneath, it could be wide open. If it's a 15 horse field, you you know you might be down between eight and ten horses, whatever it is. My first piece of advice is uh, this is an exact a key situation where you would put your favorite on top. And then you could you could spread underneath. It it could even be all. In my, you know, a piece of advice I would give is never be afraid to go all. Like a a key horse on top of all, even if it's 10, 12 horses. If you have the decision made on top and it's wide open underneath, and there's a lot of prices underneath, which usually if you do have a key horse, the rest of it's gonna be pro, uh, pretty wide open. Um you've seen it. I have an example here. I have an example for each one of these scenarios. An example here, the best one I could come up with is Flightline in his uh, Breeders' Cup Classic last year, Tim. He went off at 2-5. to five. And everybody had decided, all of us, that Flightline was going to win this race. Who was going to get second? So there was, I believe, nine, eight or nine horses in that race. So a Flightline slash all bet was going to cost you eight bucks for a dollar. Seven or eight bucks. I can't remember for sure. but So seven or eight bucks for a dollar. I put 50 bucks on that bet. Flight line all, and it was like a $400 bet. Guess what happened? The I believe it was the second longest or the longest shot in the field came second, Olympiad, and that exacta paid wildly. So there, anybody who says you can't win with chalk, you're a chalk eater, all that stuff, you're an idiot. Because there's a situation where you had the key horse, you weren't sure what was going to happen underneath, so you bet the key, you put all underneath, or at least, you know, you can spread. If, if it's 20 horses in a race, Kentucky Derby or something, you don't have to put all. I'm just, I'm, you know, maybe 10, maybe six. You know what I'm saying, Tim? What's your opinion I, on absolutely. that situation? Well, I, I, uh, I would first add that I think one of the most valuable uh, plays, uh, the reason that the exacta is one of the best plays is the fact that it's one of only three wagering categories in paramutual wagering to where you can actually see what the payoff is going to be. So you've got the yeah. win play show pool. You've got the daily double and you've got the exactus. So you're able to look at what the payouts are going to be. So when you're playing a scenario like this and you've got a flight line that you think is just much the best and you look at the exactus across the board and you know that 
a $1 wager is, is going to cost you to hit all is going to cost you whatever it was in this race, seven or eight. You've got to look at all of the wagers. Now, is the, is the one with the second place horse paying at least that much money? Exactly. And in, in this case, Tim, and there you I, go. I, I, I took note of this because it was epicenter in this race. Right. Flight line epicenter was paying out $8, which was pretty much, if that happened, which was the pure chalk, you were going to break even. Worst case scenario, as long as flight line won, as long as you're convinced you have the correct key horse on top, if epicenter got second, you'd break even. Anybody is going to be a big profit, which was music to my ears. And exactly what happened. That's that's why in this case, uh, it, just being able to see that make makes your determination as to how you're going to play it a little easier. And I, I think it's a good wager in that in that position. And it doesn't happen all the time, especially in smaller no. horse Tuesday at parks type fields. You don't always have a, a horse like flight line. To, you can make that easy decision, but it does come up. It does come up. I would say once a card, you probably have a, a horse like this. Uh, let's move to the second choice here. Like I said, I, I laid out eight uh, scenarios. That was the first one. So I believe this is the next one. So you've decided on a single horse that uh, is just like in the flight line case is much better than the rest of the field, but there are two or three that you think could finish in second place. So how are you approaching that? So an example of this would be, and Tim, you were, you saw this live and uh, we all profited nicely right. from this one was elite power in the Breeders' Cup Sprint this year. Elite Power was the heavy favorite. I think he was around 1-1 one to one or 6-5. to five. And there was two, one or two uh, horses that we liked for second and third. And when I say we, it was me, but uh, it was Gunite, and I can't I can't remember the other one. Um, I don't know, Speedboat Beach or whoever you had. Right. But I really loved Elite Power to win that race, and I knew that out of the 7-10 to 10 horses in the field that I only liked two or three to get second. So we did a elite power over gunite and one other horse. I, I can't remember who it was, but, uh, you know, so it was a $2 bet for a $1 bet. So you had, you know, elite power over two horses that to make a $1 exact a bet with those, uh, with that scenario is $2. So, you know, we, again, we, I think we ended up making like a $200 or something or a hundred dollar exact a bet, something ridiculous. Um, a hundred dollar exact bet cost 200 because we put the two horses to either one of them could get second and it ended up paying like sixteen hundred dollars or something so i mean there's another example of yeah it's chalky but if you know if you're confident whether it's flight line or in this case elite power if you're super confident in the top top decision and pretty confident in second maybe between two or three that's the second scenario and that's uh those two by the way are probably where I make the biggest bets if, if you have a scenario like this and we'll cover right. how big, how hard we want to go on these bets um, as we go through these. But, and, and that was my question for you, Ombre is, is when you're in a scenario like this and you don't have to spread to all, if you've only got two or three horses, do you increase your base wager here? Yes. Yes. So the, uh, the first example, the flight line example with the all, I would call that like a midsize bet because as you'll see as we go through these, if you start boxing and key boxing, it gets more expensive. But even like a flight line all was a seven or eight dollar bet for flight line overall. In this scenario, it's only like two or three dollar bet. And as we get through these, boxing them becomes expensive. You'll see. But Absolutely. I think this scenario here is probably the when I bet the hardest. If you have one over two or three options. Because if you pick, like, let's say it's the one horse over the two, three, and four, that's only three bucks. So you could put that, you know, 10 times it's 30 bucks. Versus as we go through these other scenarios, you'll see it adds up pretty quick. So, yeah, these these first right. two, this one here is probably the hardest I'll bet, this scenario here. Scenario two is probably the hardest I'll bet, meaning if you can narrow it down to a top horse over two or three, nail that bet and go hard on it. Now, I hit one of these big today at Parks, so... And, and Ombre, one more question about these first two. So these first two we're talking about in this particular case, we've given examples of flight line. So we, we were talking about a horse that is clearly superior. So yes. is, is there somewhere to where you draw the line uh, as far as the horse, as far as how great that uh, that opinion is of the horse that you've got on top before you make these top two wagers? Yeah, exactly. If you can't, if you don't walk away saying, if this horse loses, I'll be shocked. 
then these two first two scenarios do not compute. Because for me, it's like a, a flight line scenario. You knew either there had right. to be some kind of catastrophic scenario where he got hurt or, you know, even if he stumbled out of the gate, that horse was going to win that race. In the case exactly. of elite power, which was a slightly less confidence level than, um, you know, flight line, but, but we still, I mean, it was kind of like, I'd be very surprised if he lost. That's that fits into these first two scenarios. Right. So let's go and ahead the, and go and to the, scenario three here and, and we'll start sure. talking about what you were getting at. I think. Absolutely. So the next one we have here is that uh, you've got a single horse on top of the field and you, you have confidence that there's a second horse in this race that is behind this one, but clearly ahead of everything else. Yeah. So that's, this is the one, the one scenario where I would recommend a straight exacta, you know, um, and this is the cheapest way of wagering. You can make a $1 exacta. If you're confident in one, two in order, it's a dollar bet. So if you hit, you make a hundred dollar exacta bet with the top two in order, you're getting paid a hundred times the exacta payout. So even if it's chalky, and this is why I hate, and you saw me on the cocktail lounge Thursday night, blow up on somebody about this chalky stuff. It's okay to be chalky if you pin the bet correctly and you and you put the money in the right spot. An example of this one I have is Cody's Wish over National Treasure in the um in the Breeders' Cup this year. Yes. I think everybody and their brother knew Cody's Wish was going to win. And even if you didn't think he was going to win, you wanted him to win for the whole scenario. And National Treasure was sitting there at about four to one. And to me, it was clearly the second best horse. And I want to say that thing that it paid out way more than it should have to me. And here's an example where I'm going. I know that Cody's wish is going to wish win. I, I feel like this is a easy bet. And again, like you asked how confident you have to be very confident. I was very confident. Right. Cody's wish was going to win second place. I was pretty confident that national treasure was going to get second and you could run through the next two or three horses after that it, debatable. But for me and our, and our uh, trust of profits, uh, numbers, it was national treasure for me. And it was like pretty confident that we could bet that straight. And there's a situation where I don't know, a fifty dollar exacta, I don't have the payout in front of me, but it but it was very nice. And if you can if you can streamline first and second, bet it straight. I mean, it, obviously it's harder to hit because you're not boxing, you're not putting, you know, a whole lot of other horses in play. It has to happen exactly the way you're saying. But there are races where that's pretty easy. It's rare, but you know, once in a while you see a race where it's like, I know who's getting first and second. That's when you bet this way. What are Nothing your thoughts on that? You have a strong opinion on an ice code exacta. Say it again. I said nothing like when you have a strong opinion exactly. on an oh, ice yeah. code exacta. And that's when you can really nail a uh, nail a big bet. Take it home, man. Exactly. So, so the I'm next sure. question that we have here, uh, the next scenario, should I say, is that... Uh, you don't have a, a clear single favorite on top, but you do have two horses that you feel are better than everybody else. And those two, you kind of think are better than everybody else in the field, but you can't pick between the two as to who might finish on top and who underneath. All right. This is a situation where you clearly just box the top two. You box the top two to come in either order. It costs you twice as much. A dollar bet costs you two bucks. And uh, an example of this is the Forte Cave Rock. This is one I've used a lot because I personally hit big publicly on this one. Um, it was, I want to say Cave Rock was about six to five. Forte was about four to one. So it was a little bit chalky again for the anti-chalk betters. But I think I put 50 bucks on those two to uh, a, a, a $50 exacta box, which was $100. And if it came Cave Rock, Forte in that order, it was going to pay... I don't know, five or six to one. And if it came Forte over Cave Rock, which was the longer shot on top, it was going to pay like 11 to one or 12 to one. And so to me, I felt both of those horses were superior to the rest of the field. And I think everybody felt that way. Right. And I remember Cowan like hitting himself on the forehead being like, why didn't I just bet that way? Exactly. Because everybody tried to get Q. Oh, Cave Rock's the single, Cave Rock's the key horse. And we're all sitting there going, I think that uh, Forte is almost as good as Cave Rock. It's going to be close. And a long story short, I put the $50 to win. And in that case, if you eat the chalk and it does come with the favorite on top, if Cave Rock would have won that, it still would have paid five or six to one. 
on a $2 bet. So we would have tripled our money at the worst. So if you put a $50 exacta, you'd have got 150 back. But the upside is if you hit with the bigger, the longer shot on top, get 11 to one, whatever it was. And it was like, that was how I started off my weekend last year at, at the Breeders' Cup. And it was like, all right, now I got money to play with all weekend long. And that's sometimes it feels easy to just box two and just watch them walk away. And in that case, that was like perfect. I'm sitting there going, wow, these two are really, really are superior. Just like, you know, our numbers told us. So there's a case where you can do that. I mean, you have to be confident in two horses there, even if they're not in, in uh, any particular order, but it's still better than, you know, trying to get way too cute. Just don't right. get cute. That's the whole thing with exacta betting. Don't get cute. If you can't commit to one or two, and we'll get into this as we go, don't get cute. So Tim, right. what are your thoughts on this? Do you have any uh, thoughts? Well, I, I do. Actually, I wanted to add a couple of things on this. First, this this is probably 75% or more of my wagers. Yeah. I, I'm I'm an exacta box kind of player. And and the other thing that I wanted to add was that uh, the reason that I play that is not because I play all the races and see two horses that are clearly superior. I, I think that what what the key word in here is that you feel. And and basically, so this is the way that I approach horse racing is when I'm looking at races, I'm looking for races where I have a strong opinion on two horses. And, and that's where I'm going to target. And here's a perfect example is last weekend, I handicapped uh, the card at Aqueduct. And I was looking at the races and I went through that card and I was kind of disappointed by the time I got to the last race because I just did not have a strong opinion on two horses in any race leading up to that last race. And I look at that last race and I looked at the PPs and I saw it was one eight or one nine. I know it was the one because the one was an entry and one of them ended up scratching out. But I looked at those two horses and I'm like, I, I think these are the best two horses in the race. And it, it was a, a pretty decent sized field. And then when I, when I saw the wagers and the way they were playing out, the, the horses actually ended up being the top two choices in the wager, but they were like four to one and nine to two. Yeah. And, and I'm like, okay, I, I agree that they're the best two horses. Now that, that means they're lukewarm favorites, but I had a strong opinion that I don't care what, where the betting public win and the money yes. was spread. I felt very strongly about it. So I bet it and it was a $50 exacta and I had that five times. So it's like, that, that was a good wager. So I, I bet basically on that race and, and I boxed the two horses. So I had a $20 wager, 10, uh, you know, $10 exact at each way. And, and I bet $20 on the aqueduct card that day and, and walked away with about 250. There you go. And it's like, did you have a strong opinion on one or the other, or were you just kind of, I, I, I did on both of them. I and did. I, actually the horse that won is the, the horse that I liked on top. He was the, the outside horse, not the one horse and the one ended up finishing second. So to play devil's advocate. Yes. You can bet it straight. Yes. But I mean, come on. Like sometimes it's like, it's a hedge. It's a hedge. And a lot of times the hedge right. saves your ass or in the case of like, if you have a four to one and then like an eight to one, or in the case of Forte and Cave Rock, the hedge actually boomed us. It paid out three times more than the, uh, the actual confidence level was going to be. And that's, you're looking for value, but don't let this, here's my whole thing. And here's, if I'm going to say one thing on these videos, the educational videos, it's don't listen to the people who say, Look for value and, you know, otherwise it's garbage. It's not true. You can find value in sing like a straight exacta, for example. I mean, right. you can find value there. We did it. We've done it in the lounge two or three of the last four or five weeks where it was like, yes, it was a one-to-one -one, uh, even money shot on top. This past week, it was all underneath and it would paid like nine to one, whatever it was. Right. And so, yes, you can make money with chalk. I'm not saying you have to bet chalk. I'm not even saying uh, advocate betting chalk, but for the people who are hardcore against chalk, I'm against that. Right? I, I so. am too. Now I, I don't love playing low, low odds chalk over low odds second pick. Now yes. I will play low odds chalk over another horse that I have a strong opinion on, but I, I will tell you that I think that there are two wagers in the exact pools that get overplayed. And that is the top two picks and 
the favorite and the longest couple of picks in the in the race, the longest couple yeah. of shots in the race. Those are overplayed. And when you start looking at the mid ground, if you can look at the mid ground, a lot of times you're going to find some value exactus that pay and do very well. And and I make money with that theory. Yeah. And what what we're talking about here too, by the way, if I don't know if you play on TVG or you know whatever, there's a thousand different um, betting sites to bet on. But on TVG, for example, they're called probables. For exactas, go look at the probables, and they're live updated. I mean, within a minute or two, they're live updated. So if you got if you like this one horse on top of the two, and it's chalky, it might be paying four bucks on that exacta, but you know, two minutes later, it might be six bucks. It might be twelve bucks. Right. So now all of a sudden, it's chalky, but twelve to one. So I mean, that, that's that's where we're at with this, and right. and yeah, of course, if you're looking at, and you'll see it all the time too, especially on like uh, short fields four or five horses on some of these uh weekday stuff if it's like a two or three dollar exact i mean yeah of course nobody wants to bet that type of chalk but if you're putting right. a if you can get nine to one on an easy chalk bet never above that there there are a couple of uh, uh websites out there that have some fair payoff uh calculations that you can do for exact as to where basically you take two dollars as a two dollar wager multiply it by the odds of the uh the first horse and the odds of the second horse plus one and if you do that it'll give you a number to where it'll say let's let's say it's uh two uh two to one and three to one so you take two dollars times the two to one so that's four and then you got three to one plus one so that's four so you got four times four so that gives you 16. yeah that's so the the fair odds Odds for that payment, that payoff is $16. So if you're paying above that, it's a good wager. If it's paying below that, it's, it's below fair payoff odds, and it's probably something you don't want to attack. But it, there are a couple of places out there that I've seen calculations like that. I think that one's Brisnet or something like that. But yeah, and that's uh, a good place. It's, to start it's a good way to look at it. Yeah, that way you kind of can, you know, price yourself in or out of a bet ahead of time, especially if you're the type of person who likes to. Make your wagers before uh, you see public opinion. If public opinion gets involved, a lot of people will pull off bets because, oh, nobody likes the horse I like, so I'm just going to not bet it now, which is not not recommended. Let's go not to the fifth uh, option here, uh, fifth scenario, which is... Um, so now we're adding horses on top here. So you got three horses that you like that you think stand out above everybody else on top. And, and you have an opinion that within those three horses is going to be your exacta. Yeah. So basically this is a, a situation where you box three, you, you can box three. And a lot of people hate this because it costs six bucks to box three horses. And I'll tell you um, a scenario where you don't want to do this is if you're if the three horses you like are all the three favorites or something like that, maybe not a great idea. But if you've got two of the favorites and uh, one of them is like, you know, eight to one or a big long shot, some some scenario like that, I'm all for boxing three. And if you're talking a big field like Breeders' Cup stuff or Kentucky Derby, there's no problem with boxing three or more, four or five horses sometimes on a big field like that. Anybody who tells you that that's wrong, you're an idiot. Every race is different. Absolutely. I've boxed four and five horses before. There's no shame in that. And I've won a bunch of money doing that. It's not always correct. You don't want to do it at, you know, on a, I don't know, a freaking Mahoning Valley six horse field. You don't want to do that. But, you know, right. there are times when you can box three, four, five horses in this situation where if you can't, de if you can't decide between three, who's going to be on top, but you think that these three are going to be in the top three. There you go. It's a $6 bet for one, Tim, and they can come in any order. And uh, yeah, as the second place opinion goes, you know, you feel like they're out of your three horses that you're boxing. They're going to get first and second. There you go. That's, that's how you bet that. It's a $6 for one. What are right. your thoughts on this style of betting? Well, let me give you the best example in the world. I'm betting three horses in a box to where I, I think it makes a lot of sense and, and even more horses. Kentucky Derby. Yeah, exactly. Kentucky Derby. You, you have to pick your spots. This is not a wager you want to play, as you said, regularly on a regular basis at Santa Anita in five horse fields. No. But if you look at the Kentucky Derby, you've got 20 starters. You know, the odds are spread. 
the, the favorites typically don't run. And if they do, they, you know, they don't always win. And if they do, they're not running on top of the other favorites. You're always getting a horse at a price. It seems like somewhere in that exact and the exact is at times two years ago, rich strike pay incredibly wild. Yeah. And, and, and even and, the know, favorites in the Kentucky Derby with that big of a field, even the favorites are going to be like five to one, eight to right. one. So even, even if it does come, chalky in the kentucky derby it's gonna pay i mean so right exactly man and you know breeders cup too especially like turf races and i have in my notes here there's too many examples to talk about a single race scenario here but i mean if you got a, a full field of like eight eight plus horses and you can't make up your mind that usually you you'll usually see that the the odds are spread out a lot you'll see that on a cocktail lounge woodbine has that a lot Right. They're really good at putting up fields to where even if it's eight or nine horses, the, the favorite's like three to one. So even the chalkiest chalk finish you can come up with is still going to pay a lot more than $6 exacta. So even if you bet you box three horses, it's going to be a, a profitable situation. Right. So don't be afraid of that against popular uh, belief here. I've, I've got one more example for you that uh, I think yeah, is a good case for playing this wager. Track. So. Ascot, Kentucky Downs, Turfway Park. Yes, yeah, Turfway. Yep, exactly. Th those are those are racetracks that historically you look at the odds of the horses in the Exacta, and and you know it, it's not favorite favorite. They're they're not putting any six dollar Exactas in on a regular night, and obviously that means that. The, Picking those horses is not the easiest thing, but when you've got opinions, don't be afraid to box the horses at tracks like this because these are tracks to where the more horses can significantly pay out for you, and this is where that you'll see some really high payouts for exactus. And uh, to close this scenario out, scenario five is, yeah, this is a lower this is a lower type of bet too. This is you know we talked about betting a straight exacta, the top two in a row. We talked about boxing two. We talked about king one on top of two or three. That's where you really will press hard. Like, you know, depending on your bankroll, maybe a $10, $20 exacta. If you're talking about boxing three or more horses, now you're talking a lower bet, maybe a dollar or two, or, or, you know, depending on your bankroll again. But you're banking on that because you're boxing two or three or four, that there's going to be prices involved. So you don't have to bet as big. Because you're maybe maybe a twenty to one gets involved or even wins it, so now you're talking. I've seen dollar exactas pay out eight hundred dollars. If you if you've got that type of belief and you're boxing, you know some big big odds horses, you don't have to bet as big. Whereas if you're putting if you are betting quote unquote chalky or straights, you you might need to put ten or twenty bucks on it to make a real profit. If you're if you're boxing two or three or four. And there are some prices involved. You don't need to bet twenty bucks uh, a box that that'll cost just sixty or hundred bucks. This is a a bet you could maybe two or three bucks for twelve or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Right. So this Agreed. is a situation where you don't need to bet as big because you're you're kind of banking on the prices to get it home for you. Good point. So let's go to uh, scenario six, Tim. What do we have here? So this is a lot more spread. So you've got a race here to where there, there are several horses. Uh, we're looking at four or more that you think can win the race. So it's kind of wide open and you look at second place and it's wide open as well. So uh, you, you really don't have any uh, strong opinions in this race other than you can narrow it down to a group of four horses, uh, but you really don't have any strong opinions as to how it's going to finish one, two. So I have two scenarios of betting this. And this is the, we're getting down now to where if you are tight and, you know, you have a small budget, maybe you just don't even play a race like this. But if you have a budget and you're looking to, you know, make a big strike on a small wager, there's two ways to bet this. This is uh, exact a key box bet, which Tim and I, you've seen us do this a lot if you watch the cocktail lounge on Thursdays. If you can't decide between two, three, four horses on top, and then, you know, the you kind of feel the same about second. Exact the key box or even multiple key boxes. You might have, uh, let's say, the one and two horse are the two favorites. You might put the one horse key box over the two, three, and four, two, three, four, and five, even. So you got the one horse on top, four, four horses key boxed underneath, meaning that the one can win or get second, but the two, three, four, and five 
has to get first or second as well. So now you're kind of this is a this is a good bet for like Turfway Park, like an example you brought up. Right. Full fields, it's on turf, it's wild. You get 20 to 1, 30, 50 to 1 winners all the time. So you can bet it as an exact key box bet, like I just mentioned, or you can even do two of them. So you might do the one key box over the two, three, four, five, or you might even do the two with the one, three, four, five, like both of them. So that e- either way, if it comes with the one or the two on top or second with three or four underneath, if either one of those hits, because if you feel like it's a really spread race, ton of odds, because if you put uh, the one horse over the two, three, four, five, for example, in a key box, it's going to be 10 bucks for a dollar. So you need to know if you're looking at your probables that this thing's going to pay at least at least 10 bucks in with the uh, understanding that it could pay out like 500, you know, like because you're putting in, if you're going five deep, you better hope you have some 20 to one type situation happening here. And this, this type of uh, scenario, what are we on scenario six? You, you only do these if you, if it's wide open and you can reach to some 20 to one plus horses that you think can actually win. And you see this all the time. Like you said, uh, Turfway Park, right. uh, Kentucky Downs, Europe, right. Japan. Uh, you don't see this again. This is not a Santa Anita on a Friday, you know, so very rarely do you use this, but I use it all the time in a track like uh, Turfway Park. It's the only way I can play there because exactly. otherwise I'll be priced out. Go ahead here, Tim, because I know you pl- you do play Turfway reasonably Often, right? I, I, I do, but I, I'll tell you when when a race gets to this kind of perspective, I'm I'm looking at it from one of two ways. I'm gonna do one of two things, and that is most of the time I'm probably not gonna bet that race. And if I do, because I'm just looking at it, and and here here's the thing: a lot of people say that you shouldn't bet races that you have a strong opinion, and I don't disagree with that, but I do think that that there is one exception to that. And, and that is entertainment value, very low wager to where, you know, you, you, you have the money. You're like, I'm, I'm just doing this. I'm having fun. I, I've got, I've got a little Cocktail bankroll. I've, I've, right. I've got a little bankroll. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to wager on the race, even without a super strong opinion, then I would go and it would be one of those minimum bet situations to where you play it exactly like you talked about for all those reasons. But uh, I, I'm typically, if if I'm looking at the bigger days and, and a race is like this, I, I'm probably sitting this race. Right. This is a fun, this is a fun bet. Absolutely. And again, if, uh, th- there if you go. We're talking, and maybe we should make a separate video, Tim, if, if you're trying to make a living grinding out bets. Uh, yeah, exactly. I would walk away from this one too. Uh, anything after uh, scenario five, I would walk away from if, if we're trying to make a living Putting Absolutely. food on your kid's plate or something like that. Different. But here, yeah, entertainment value. I mean, this is a race where if right. there's 12, 14 horses and you can somehow get it down to four or five and put one on top key box, you know, maybe maybe in a second key box. And we're just we're just trying to cover because if you follow the cocktail lounge, you've seen us bet this way. That's the only reason I'm covering these. We're exactly. So people profit, understand. Consistent profit. I wouldn't bet these. Anything no. beyond uh, scenario five, I wouldn't bet consistently if i was trying to make a living here so you right. take that with a grain of salt if you're trying to be a, a handicapper for a living stop the video at uh scenario five <laughs> exactly so after this uh tim we have and i, I have the same thing this is a lower bet like it like you said a minimum bet dollar because you're probably spending 10 12 bucks on a on a dollar now so you actually right. need this to be you need this to be long shot uh centric to even make money here so right. not exactly uh an ideal situation. And a lot of times if it's 14 horses. Even if you have five bombs in there, you might have the wrong bomb. So entertainment purposes only scenario. Exactly. What are we on? Seven, seven. Here we go. So th- this is kind of similar to the last one in that yeah. there are probably four horses that you think can uh, win the race. But of those four, you're, you're pretty sure that of the four, you've got two of those that are going to come in first and second. Yeah, so this is just a box scenario versus the key box. So if you think you got, like you you mentioned, the Kentucky Derby is a good example. Right. Uh, the year Rich Strike won. 
I had a four horse exacta and trifecta box that came second, third, fourth, and fifth perfectly. And you and me both. <laughs> and I think, yeah, I think all, a lot of people did. If right. Rich Strike didn't do it, Rich Strike did. Everything else was perfect. I mean, it was. Right. That's the scenario in a turfway, whatever. And again, and to to box four horses and a, a dollar exacta is twelve bucks, and to box five horses, a dollar exacta is twenty bucks. It's not a scenario you want to get involved in too often, but if it's a situation where, and you see this in the Breeders' Cup a lot, Kentucky Derby, obviously, where if you have a a favorite in a race that's like six or eight to one, you see it in these real deep fields. I know, I know, you see it in the Breeders' Cup turf all the time. The favorite in the race is like six to one. So you know, if you hit any exacta, it's going to pay. There's nothing wrong with betting boxing five and just you know, and again, you're kind of spinning a roulette wheel. To be honest, this is not something you want to play if you're trying to make a living or uh, make a consistent profit and feed your kids. Again, after scenario five, no bets, but. Entertainment value, yeah, man. You know, this is a this is a same situation like you said, Tim, of the last couple where it's like maybe you box the top four, even five in a in a big field at uh, Turfway or, or the Breeders Cup, or that's or a Kentucky Derby. Game. That's you know that's another one to where the bigger races like that, twenty horse fields, and and we can wrap this one up real quick with scenario number eight, which is why so the last one, yeah. <laughs> And I think it's pretty obvious what we do here is you just don't bet it, folks. You walk away or you find a horse that maybe you find one you like. Maybe it's your grandpa's middle name or your, what is it, the dead pedal arm. And you better win plays or, you know, put two bucks. Don't hurt yourself. Don't hurt your bankroll. And, you know, if you, if you insist on betting every single race, then have some fun with it. But there's no exacta here, clearly. Um that's what I have in my notes. No exact bets. I mean, have fun with it. But if it's wide open, top two or three spots, get out of there. I mean, you can take a race off once in a while, you degenerate bastards, right? <laughs> I totally agree. And you, you just can't bet every race. And I, I think it's important to say that because in the cocktail lounge, obviously the card comes up and, and we play every race on the card. And we people have to understand if you're watching this and you're a regular visitor to the lounge that obviously we're in there one to have a little fun, that we're using a, a set bankroll, that that we're spreading across those races, that we're we want to to make a recommendation in each race, but that doesn't mean that if we're playing a personal bankroll. We're, that's how we would approach that particular card. We're, we're trying to go through and, and just have a little fun and some entertainment value and do it that way and let you understand through through El Hombre's responses here exactly how he approaches the thought process we have in the lounge and, and his other days as well. And, and some of those, like you saw in the last two, you might be like, well, I've seen you do that in, in the lounge. Well, true, but that's not how we would typically do that. Yeah, and like you said, I mean, it's it's entertainment value in the lounge, and there's, believe me, every week you hear us banter back and forth, who wants to take this one? And there are some <laughs> races that nobody really wants to take, but it's like, no. okay, I'll take it. But that's a race you'd skip. I mean, it's okay. It's hard to do, especially, you know, if you're new and you're trying to just have fun with each race and you think you're going to, or if you're hot, that's the other thing. If you're hot, sometimes it's hard to skip a race. Well, I'm going to bet every, you know, you feel like you're invincible or whatever, but that's the other thing. So if there's a race you hate, man, jump off it. If there's a race that goes from scenario five through eight here, skip it. Unless you, you know, you just want the action entertainment and you can afford it. Right. I don't know, Tim, anything else to close it out? Because this is kind of the exact theory I have in his eight scenarios and we covered all eight of them. Hopefully we uh, can help you make a decision at one point or another. More specifically, we can get into it deeper on another show, but and we're going to do this with uh, trifectas and some, some horizontals and everything else too. But any thoughts, uh, final thoughts on exactas? No, nothing really to add here. What I, what I would say is this based on the things that we've said here, you know, make sure that you like the video. If you find this content interesting, we're looking to do more of these kinds of videos, subscribe to the channel because we are going to be putting out some more. And if you've got some questions based on something that we've said here, please put them in the comments down yeah. below, stop in the lounge on a Thursday night and let's talk about it. And we have a lot of different, a lot of different opinions, backgrounds, theories, 
and like we have somebody like Sean who goes all around the country and does this stuff. Tim who focuses in on his Kentucky area and he's very he's very sharp and he's way into the numbers. Somebody like me who's a pure numbers person. Somebody like the formula who's even more of a pure numbers person. Somebody like Jessica who's pedigree driven. We have like a, th a thousand different uh, angles. Right. So if you have an angle you want to see delved into deeper or explain more because listen when it comes to like pedigree, I'm the first one to admit I'm an idiot with that stuff. I only know like, oh, that's a tappet horse. It's probably a late runner. You know, whatever. I, I got very basic right. knowledge of that. And uh, somebody like Jessica might say the same thing as far as bet strategy. I don't know. So, I mean, we all have our strong points. So let's get it out there. Yeah. Comment, uh, like, and subscribe. We'd love to see it. Our channel keeps growing. We're over 12,000 now. So let's keep it rocking, folks. We appreciate it. Tim, cheers. And I know you Cheers. you'll be you'll be dropping at least one one of these educational videos because Tim's got some knowledge to share and uh so do several other of us on the channel. So again, thanks for joining everybody and peace out.